Nichols, thanks, Joe. Great show tonight. Operation Fox Hunt, a Chinese plot to kidnap American citizens. We're going to talk to the reporter who exposed it. But first, why big city police chiefs say politicians are the problem behind our crime epidemic. Good evening, I'm Leland Vitter. We like to say two things can be true at once. So right now, shootings are surging in major American cities. And those sworn to protect us from the bad guys say the politicians are at fault. Yesterday, people dining in a ritzy area of downtown D.C. were forced to take cover as shots rang out on the street. Two men were injured in the shooting. The D.C. police chief then gave a fiery response echoing sentiments felt in other cities, like right here in Chicago. You cannot coddle violent criminals. You cannot. You cannot treat violent criminals who are out here making communities unsafe for you, for your loved ones, for me, for my loved ones. They might not want a job. They might not. They might not need services. What they may require is to be off of our streets because they're making it unsafe for us. And if that's what it requires, then that's what it requires. And we have to own that. We have to own it because if not, we see more of this. If the courts are continuing to release violent people we arrest, the outcomes of our strategy are less effective than they could be if they hold violent offenders. We've heard similar sentiments from the Oakland police chief. We bring in former New York City Police Commissioner Howard Safer, who has a lot of experience dealing with City Hall, mayors and the courts as well, in addition to running the police department. Uh, Mr. Former Commissioner, uh, it seems as though this has gone from a crime problem to a political problem. It absolutely is a political problem. The problem is that leftist city mayors and leftist city councils are basically causing the police to be unable to do their job by passing regulations and laws that handcuff the police. And it's a terrible thing, and it is bringing us back to the bad old days that we saw in the 1990s. I think in the bad old days back here in Chicago, there were something like 900 homicides uh, in one year. It struck me as I watched the chief of police in Washington, D.C. go on, and it wasn't just for those 90 or so seconds that you saw on television. It was for about five minutes, and he was clearly emotional about this. In, in him blaming his bosses, he's not an elected official, uh, he's putting his job at risk. He is, and it was a very brave thing to do because he is appointed. But the fact is, we somebody has to tell the truth. Yeah. And the truth is that leftist politicians have vilified the police. Uh, Black Lives Matter and Antifa are ruling the day in those cities like Seattle and Portland and parts of New York and New Jersey and Philadelphia, which has the highest per capita murder rate in the United States. And unless we do something and do it now, you know, I, I look at what happened in Washington last night. That was more like Beirut than it was like our nation's capital. I, this I is spent, a crisis. I, I've spent some time in the Middle East in, in watching that gun battle around a restaurant just a block away from where the president and vice president had brunch a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it, it was reminiscent of what you'd see uh, in the Middle East. This was a tweet from the D.C. Police Union. Welcome to Washington, D.C., where violent crime permeates everything. It is a tragedy. The elected officials won't let us do our jobs. That was in response to a shooting at National Stadium, the baseball stadium, last weekend. Question, is the only reason now we're hearing more about this and the police chiefs are speaking out in the way they are is because of where in cities these crimes are happening? Absolutely. You know, police chiefs know what to do. The fact is... We cleaned up New York in the late 90s and 2000 and right into 2010. But what happened is when the administrations changed, they did things like take away qualified immunity from police. They called police, look, the president of the United States called police racist and brutal and said it was a problem throughout the United States. Could not be further from the truth, but when our national leader is vilifying the police along with these leftist politicians, Police are going to hang back. They're not going to do the job that they're really paid to do. We're seeing 
huge retirement numbers. We're seeing very little recruiting. Yeah, the, and the, the chief, the chief talked about price. the chief talked about that today, saying I, I simply don't have the manpower. My force is stretched too thin, and uh, talked about how uh, the funding had been cut. He also blamed. We don't have time to run the soundbite, but he also blamed the very, very loose marijuana laws that are in Washington D.C. There's a number of other cities around the country that have very lenient marijuana laws. Is that a problem, or is marijuana just a victimless crime? Absolutely not. Marijuana is a gateway drug, and the fact is that illegal marijuana continues to be used even in places where it's legal. The illicit market is still going on. People, you know, I was a federal narcotic agent for quite a number of years, and I watched very few heroin addicts who didn't start with marijuana. So it, it, it is a problem, and the biggest problem of all is we're not letting police do what they know how to do. Yeah. If we let police know how, what, how to do what they do, we will reduce crime. But that does not look like it's happening. You know, we have a pandemic that it looks like we're coming out of. We now have a national epidemic on well, crime. They say, on us. they say in America, oftentimes the pendulum swings too far one way. You have to wonder how long it's going to take uh, to swing back uh, the other way. Uh, former New York City Police Commissioner Howard Safe, appreciate you taking the time on a Friday afternoon, sir. Thank you. Good to be with you, Lynn. All right. Now to this, and pay attention. Beijing is waging spy wars right here on American soil. The U.S. government has now uncovered a covert Chinese operation that capitalizes truly on the American way of life. And the reason we know about it, because of two reporters from ProPublica. Operation Fox Hunt, how China exports repression using a network of spies that are hidden in plain sight. Here is their breakdown of the operation from their piece. Quote, it illuminated a little-known cloak-and-dagger battle between Chinese operatives and American agents on U.S. soil amid growing tensions between these two countries. Sebastian Rotella is a senior reporter at ProPublica. He focused on a New Jersey family pressured to serve as spies for the Chinese government. And he joins us now on a very shaky Skype connection, but we sure appreciate it because this is such an important story. Uh, what was your biggest surprise in investigating it? I think my biggest surprise was how intense and widespread this activity is and how much effort and how many researchers are put into pursuing these targets, uh, sometimes for years and sometimes even after U.S. law enforcement gets involved. It's, it's a global fugitive apprehension program, which in some parts of the world functions legally, but here in the United States is an illegal 